Hi guys, it's afternoon, 2.22 p.m. on July the 20th, 2017, and it's 100 degrees outside, and the humidity is a little high too, so I'm not going to go outside and do a video that's out. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about is I wanted to compare uh, RVing, you know, using a travel trailer with going camping in a car, a Toyota Prius for me, because I did it for a while. I, did, I camped in a travel trailer for 21, 22 years. I live in a travel trailer now. I'm 72 years old, but this is a, a 2013 uh, Jayco J Flight 26 foot bunkhouse that I lived in. I've lived in our travel trailers for nearly 30 years, long time. And, uh, but also go, I've gone camping in a car and I've gone camping in a pickup using a uh, camper top recently for about five weeks and I wanted to discuss some of the things that are common and different and you know kind of give you some feedback if you're planning on making a choice among those three things and others but to lead into that uh, there's a couple of comments here related to the scamp uh, travel trailer that I actually had had one ordered and uh, canceled the order and this is uh, Sophia. She says, good morning, Rusty. Did I, did I just hear you say that you are no longer purchasing the scamp? Yes, you did. I canceled that order a few weeks ago. Uh, it says, I am new to watching your videos and love them. I'm contemplating purchasing a scamp. I live in central Minnesota and plan on visiting the scamp manufacturer. If you are no longer buying a scamp, uh, what changed your mind? Uh, uh, I'm not buying the scamp, and the reason is, I found another option that work, I think will work better for me, and, and I don't want to pull anything anymore. I mean, when I was put, started out pulling a travel trailer, it was okay. I mean, I did it for years and years and years and years and years and years, but now I'm just a little too old to fool with setting it up, and I don't want to tow anything down the highway. You know, you've got, whenever you're towing something, you're aware that it's there, and it reduces your gas mileage and some other things. Of course, the scamp's not going to reduce it much because it's a lightweight fiberglass unit. And if you get the 13-foot model, you, you're basically towing 1,000 pounds, which is not much at all. So, no, I think it's a quality unit. I still recommend it. And at some point, who knows, I may end up with one. But right now, I would say I doubt it. The pickup with a camper top works fine for me right now. And uh, I think I'll continue that direction until I come up with something else. Uh, another uh, person about the scamp said... Uh, Hey, uh, this is Mike. He says, hey, Rusty, have you been enjoying your life journey? For as I know, I wonder if you could do a video explaining your reasoning behind leaving your Prius behind and changing over to a truck camper. Also, are you still eventually set on a scamp to pull with your trucks? Thanks and keep up the good work. Mike, I tell you what, <clears throat> my reasoning for leaving or, or, or not continuing to go camping in the Prius was twofold. One, uh, it was getting, it was, too, it's quite a small space, as you know, and I'm 72 years old, and there were some issues with the space, get, getting to be anyway, and I'd done it for about five years, or five years, full, off and on for five years, and, uh, you know, it, it also limits your ability to go dispersed camping or boondocking in that the Prius is not designed for off-road use has very low clearance, so going down some of the Bureau of Land Management roads are completely out. Uh, some of the forest roads the same way, completely out. As far as the fuel economy and everything else, uh, it works great. And if you're really flexible and, you know, stuff, and I'm six foot two, you know, getting in and out was beginning to get on my mind a little bit. And, and of course, it was my full-time car, <clears throat> and I can't, I can't afford to have two vehicles, so I bought the pickup because it has higher gr ground clearance that allows me to go to BLM campsites, Bureau of Land Management, uh, free camping, and also dispersed camping in the National Forest, which I just did uh, in a recent trip, two trips actually. And uh, yeah, it's okay. The pickup works good for me. The Prius just didn't have enough clearance. The pickup has higher clearance. It's easier to get in and out of for me. Also, with the camper top on the back, I got the Lear 180, which has an additional height of about four inches. Uh, over their regular uh, camper top and so I had plenty of space and, and the first trip I went uh, there were some things I needed to redo so I came back 
made, made some modifications and went again and it worked fine. So I think it's going to be okay for me for what I'm going to do in the way of camping. So that answers that question. Now, to put those all together and give you a summary, uh, which may help some of you. Now, if you're looking, you know, if you're just, it depends, a lot of this depends on your age and other things and, and how familiar you are with uh, travel trailers and class A's, B's and all that stuff. Because when I started, I knew nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. I didn't even know anybody that had an RV. Okay, that's how new it was to me. And I bought a used one. I bought one that was too big and too heavy. That was my first mistake. And it had a door in the front and a door in the back because I thought that'd be neat. You'd have a separate entrance, which is crap. You just got two doors to worry about, uh, you know. And they, they, you know, they fall apart after a while anyway. So the unit I bought was not in good shape. Subsequent to that, <clears throat> I bought a, a 19, no, I bought a fifth wheel first and used it. It was okay. Fifth, with it, the only difference between a fifth wheel and a travel trailer to me was, you know, you could, you could back the uh, uh, fifth wheel probably into some tighter spaces because you know, it's a little more maneuverable than the uh, travel trailer, the bumper pull. So, but for me, uh, pulling a travel trailer, uh, it, it's, it just wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. So I bought this 2013. I put it under cover on some property I own. It's my home base now, and it will be until I won't be here anymore. I don't plan on selling this at all, ever. It will go to my son at my home base. Now, whenever I parked this RV here several years ago, or what, actually, I had a 19-footer that I parked here about, my God, four, 14 or 15, 14 years ago, approximately. <clears throat> and uh, I lived in it, and it was falling apart, but I didn't care, and it was paid for. And uh, and so I bought me, I didn't, I got rid of my pickup and bought me a Toyota Prius. Uh, I didn't buy the Toyota Prius with the intention of going camping in it. I just bought it because it was extremely economical and I wanted one. That was the end of that. And gasoline prices were a little higher. They kind of bubbled up around 350 a gallon and so forth, as y'all may remember. And so it worked out okay. And so, but one, uh, I was traveling and I ran across a girl that had gone and was camping in a Toyota Prius. She had a pretty nice setup because I talked to her. I'll talk to anybody if they'll stand still long enough. And uh, so I came back home and, and of course I had my Prius and I got to working on it and over a period of a few weeks of, of going out camping in it and adding this and changing that and watching some videos about people that were camping in cars and stuff, I got it down to fine art. And it was very comfortable. I really enjoyed it. It was very economical, very cheap. You were very flexible. Of course, you couldn't go boondocking and you could not go uh, dispersed camping. So with that in mind, I pretty much gave up the idea of ever pulling a travel trailer again uh, in my mind. And so after, you know, then uh, a few, I don't know, what, six, eight months ago, whatever it's been, six, seven months ago, I got to look into Class B's, everything on the planet, because I was ready to do something a little different with a little more space, and one of my requirements is I wanted to stand up, but I wanted more space, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money, da 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 da, da. didn't want a high-maintenance vehicle. You know, Class A's, B's, C's uh, can be high-maintenance, you know, and they're not, the, they're not real great on fuel economy. They're getting better, but they're not that great. Now, you can get some of the Class B's, uh, that do pretty good on mileage, but they're damned expensive, you know, particularly if you get a new one and if you get a used one, you could be just buying somebody else's problems. So with that and you know, looking at all the options, I thought, well, hell, I'll just get me a scamp, uh, a small 13 footer <clears throat> fiberglass lightweight that I could pull easily behind a pickup and it would, you know, wouldn't be that much to tow and it'd you know, have everything I needed, blah, blah, blah. And so I did. I ordered one with the idea of doing that. And then uh, in looking at some of the camper tops and some of the people that were using camper tops and putting in a bed and other stuff, a refrigerator and a fan and some solar and all that stuff, I thought, well, hell, I, that looks like a pretty good direction and fairly economical, too, because in a pickup, the pickup I've got right now, I get over 25 miles a gallon, which is not as much as a Prius, but it's okay. So you go from the travel trailer, which is pretty much a low maintenance item 
but you're pulling it with a vehicle and you have to have a pretty good vehicle to tow a, a, a 26 foot travel trailer with. Now a 13 foot travel trailer you can tow with a with an SUV but, but for me <clears throat> I can't have two vehicles because it's just me you know I mean uh, you know, a lot of people suggest well you know you know you get you a tow vehicle and then have you another car at home you know, more economical and so forth I'm not gonna fool with that too much trouble and too anyway but and then I looked at the class A, B, C's and all that stuff and again the, the class A's, class B's, class C's you know they they are if they're expensive if you get a new one that's that's it for me they are anyway for other people they're, you know, it's all relative you got the money or the right relatives you can do anything the hell you want to but so comparing them you know the, the travel trailer is a home on wheels period you, know, you got to set it up put the jacks down hook it up you know the full hookups if you have it and it's just a house you're you're out there living in your home because that's what I was doing this is my home. Uh, whenever you're camping in a Prius, uh, obviously it's not your home. I mean, for some people it can be, and for some people it is. But for me, it was just a way to go see the world or see the U.S. really inexpensively at 50 plus miles a gallon, and be able to run the air conditioner if I needed it, and that and it worked fine for several months uh, overall. Then I moved to the pickup with a camper top, and it's a good way to go, and it's fairly economical, 25 miles a gallon, and you've got just got one vehicle, and I still have my home base, my travel trailer here under a cover, and they were, that's okay, and so that's where I am now. You know, of the three things that I have done, which one do I think was best? Well, it depends on my age. I mean, at the time I started RVing, the travel trailer was a good idea because I didn't mind pulling it down the highway at all. I mean, at the time. Uh, it, it'll wear you out, I'll tell you that. And as far as setting it up and stuff, I just, you know, it's just the way things were done. I didn't know any different. So that was really the only option I had, and I did it for about 20, well, over 20 years. And then the Prius, uh, you know, just another option. Uh, it worked okay, and I did it. And I know a lot of people are doing it now. And, and now I'm at the level of doing a truck uh, with, you know, with a camper top on the back. Uh, you know, or, or, you know there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to every one, but it, for me it was just cycles. I mean, I, as I was getting older, you know, cycle A was the travel trailer, cycle B was the uh, Prius, which, you know, was a little small, a little low to the ground as I got older. And so I got to pick up now, and, and as I change again, I'll, I'll adapt. And that's what it's all about. It's not so much picking a target and trying to pick the best, you know, option you know, that'll, that'll be good for you for, for all times. You know, pick the option that works for you now and probably in the foreseeable future as far as you can see and, uh, and go with that route if you feel comfortable with it and just make it work. Go with it. And if it change, if things change, then you change. You change with it. Change, change, change. Or you got to adapt. And so that's pretty much what I've been doing. Now, what would be my next uh, option? Well, you know, I looked at a Class B, as everybody knows. I looked at a Road Trek, and I even looked at new ones. And God dang, man, uh, you know, they're you know even a best deal on a Road Trek Simplicity, the one with the minimal uh, options and so forth, is uh, sixty-five thousand dollars. That's it. And a used one, see, now when you get into used, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, get a used one. Well, get a used one, you, to me, uh, I don't like buying used stuff because to get a road track that I could afford, it's going to be 10 years old. All right, I mean, to, that I could comfortably afford. Well, a 10-year-old unit is just getting to the point where the air conditioner is going to go out, the refrigerator is going to go out, the water pump, uh, you know, the water uh, a hot water heater and other things are about done, okay, or probably already been changed once. So, you know, I don't want to fool with all that stuff. I mean, I had to change the toilet in my RV here just the other day. And I really don't like to do all that. I don't want to be doing that stuff because the older I get, the more, whenever I try to do something now, uh, sometimes I make the problem worse, okay, and, and it's not because I'm just totally ignorant. It's just that because sometimes your hands don't work right and uh, you're just a little clumsier than you were when you were 50 or 40 or 30 and that's just the way that is and even though you think your thought processes were perfect uh, you may have left out step a, a and B and you started with step C and you got a real problem D so uh, 
the process in, for RVing, if I was going to do it all over again, would be pretty much what I've done, only with, a, with some exceptions. Th these are the following. Whenever you buy a travel trailer, do you really need an awning? Answer for me now, I, I wouldn't have a travel trailer with an awning. I've got this one's got an awning nearly the length of the travel trailer and it's never been put out. I've had this travel trailer four years. When I was RVing, the first year, I thought, well, that's what you were supposed to do. So I would get to a campground, and the first thing I'd do was put out my little rug, and I'd put out my awning, and put out my chairs, and it was just me. What was I putting another chair for? The ghost, Casper? But I did, and I didn't have the Christmas lights, so I never did the lights and the little hangy things and all that crap. Never did that. A lot of people do and still do, and that's the way it is. When you're starting out RVing, you think you have to, and you think you need all that stuff. And the uh, just to give you an idea, the scamp that I ordered, I didn't have a, I didn't have the uh, air conditioner at all. I didn't have the uh, uh, roof AC at all. I didn't order the uh, awning at all. Uh, I did get upgrade the battery because you need to do that if you're going to do any boondocking or or camping uh, with solar you need a series 31 AGM battery and they they come with a series 27 the scamp does and you can upgrade that to a series 31 for 100 bucks or whatever and it's worth it and so uh, again things change you change and uh, what you know I, I'm looking at you know what would I, what would I like to do next you know I don't really know right now the pickup camper is fine other than the fact that it's not air conditioned. Do you need an air conditioner? You know, in the scamp that I ordered without the air conditioner, what I was going to do is just put in a window unit, the little 110 uh, units that are like 5,000 BTUs, very energy efficient, and just plug it into a wall outlet. And then when I'm camped somewhere with uh, shore power or at an RV park or a national park where, where we have electricity, just plug it in and run the AC. That's it. And if I was in a place where it was warm, I'd just go somewhere where they had electricity and do it. I could do the same thing in that pickup out there. I mean, I can get me a little 5,000 BTU air conditioner and put it in the back of the truck and just go to those campgrounds where, it, when it's warm that have electric, and I'm good. I can run that air conditioner all day long. That's a fact. You know, and you, can't run, you can't run it off solar, though. You can't. You can't be boondocking in other places and run the uh, uh, air conditioner. Now, you could if you get you a, 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 a 2000i Honda generator or some other gasoline, gener gasoline generator, but... Uh, then you got to have gasoline and you got something else to maintain. So again, all those are just thoughts. And for you people that are going, thinking about going camping in a Prius, it, it'll be great. It, you know, it will. You'll, you'll really love it. It's very cheap. Uh, you can't beat it. Just very flexible. If, if somebody, if you're in an area you don't feel comfortable, you just punch that little blue button and boom, the starter button and you're out of there. You don't have to pack up crap. You're gone. Same way in my pickup. I like that. I like that flexibility. And for those of you that are thinking about getting a scamp, <clears throat> oh, and also, if you go to get a scamp, tell him Rusty sent you. Uh, Nick, go, go to Nick, the salesman Nick, and tell him Rusty78609 sent you, and he'll take care of you. I promise you. But yeah, Nick is his name. He's a good salesman, very friendly, knows his stuff, knows that product inside and out. So, yeah, for you scamp buyers or people that are considering it, check with Nick and tell him Rusty78609 sent you. But. Uh, you know, there are a lot of different ways to skin that cat out there. And, uh, you know, again, try it the most economical way you can to find out if it's something you enjoy doing or not before you sink a lot of money in it. Because if you jump in and buy you a big fifth wheel or a big travel trailer or a motorhome or whatever, and you get out there on the road and you say, this sucks, well, then you're going to take a little hickey, <clears throat> a little financial damage for having made that choice. But it is fun. It is enjoyable. The older I get, the less I'll do, I'm sure. And that's just the way life is. You know, your get up and go gets up and goes, and that's that's it. You know, because I'm very comfortable here right now in my RV. I got the temperature about 78 degrees, and, uh, you know, I'm good. I'm very comfortable right here. So, but anyway, for those of you that made these comments related to the Prius camping and the scamp, thank you very much because it prompted me to go through with this video, which I've been thinking about for a while. So, anyway, uh but thank you very much. Thumbs up, Carpe Diem, adios, bye bye, buy USA made when you can drink plenty of water, three or four quarts a day will not hurt you, I promise you. Uh, it's a good way to 
alleviate gout or get rid of it. A good way to avoid kidney stones, and it's a good, it keeps your skin looking healthy and other things. I've heard other things, and also you can lose weight drinking water. Okay, and uh, but yeah, three or four quarts. You may pee like a racehorse or a two or three peckered possum, but you'll feel a hell of a lot better. Uh, also, take deep breaths, breathe in through your nose out through your mouth do that several times a day why because it relieves stress and when you relieve stress it lowers your blood pressure lowering your blood pressure is just good for you it takes pressure off your heart you'll live longer and that's what it's all about because if you don't have your health you're not going to go camping you know stretch walk do all those simple little things you can do that you don't have to pay anything for you don't have to take any pills and all that crap you know eliminate caffeinated stuff and sugary drinks and all that crap you'll be fine and uh so that's all it's about, guys, your health, because you're not going to be worried about scamping or camping or anything if you don't have it. So anyway, guys, enjoy your day. Adios. Bye-bye from Central Texas, USA. It's probably 102 now. Anyway, bye.